If you want to compute the sum of a series, you need to find the nth partial sum first. Can we find such a partial sum explicitly? Well, sometimes we can. You will see an example in this video. Suppose we want to add 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16. So, symbolically, a 1 divided by 2 to the, po two to the power n. And we want to add all those terms. Can we do that? Well, let us write down the first par few partial sums to get an idea. Well, s1 is just 1 half, the first term. S2 equals 1 half plus 1 over 4, so 3 quarters. S3 equals this 3 quarters plus 1 over 8 equals 7 over 8. And S4 is again this, uh, this uh, 7 over 8 plus 1 over 16. So we get 7 over 8 plus 1 over 16. 14 over 16 plus 1 over 16 equals 15 over 16. And then we see a pattern arise if we write it slightly different. We see S1 equals 1 minus 1 half, of course 1 half. And then S2 equals 1 minus 1 quarter. 3 quarters, S3 equals 1 minus 1 over 8, 7 over 8, and S4 equals 1 minus 1 over 16. So we see a pattern arise, so, and we can guess uh, the value of the capital n partial sum. You see, well, it looks like the n partial sum equals 1 minus 1 half to the power capital N. You see, it's okay for all of these 1 minus 1 half, 1 minus 1 over 4, 1 minus 1 over 8, 1 minus 1 over 16. So, how can we, in fact, prove that our guess is correct? Well, for that, we can use induction. It's a nice, small example of an induction proof. Uh, if you want to use induction, first you have to prove that the expression is correct for capital N equals 1. Well, for capital N equals 1, we have S1 equals 1 minus 1 half to the power 1 equals 1 half. That is OK. Then we can use the have the induction assumption. We assume that our expression is correct up till uh, capital N. So that's over here, that's the induction assumption. And then we, using this assumption, we need to prove that it is true also for capital N plus 1. So that capital Sn plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 half to the power capital N plus 1. So how can we do that proof? Well, capital uh, Sn plus 1, the n plus 1's partial sum, is the n's partial sum plus the next term. So that is capital Sn plus An plus 1. And now we can use our induction assumption, which states that capital Sn plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 half to the power n. And we know, of course, our An plus 1 explicitly, that is uh, 1 divided by 2 to the power n plus 1. And 1 divided by 2 to the power n plus 1 equals 1 half times 1 divided by 2 to the power n, so 1 half times 1 half to the power n. So we can factor out the 1 half to the power n, which we do over here. So we have our 1 half to the power n here times a minus 1. And this term yields the same, but with a plus half, is the 2 minus signs minus 1 half here. 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. So what do we have? The 1 still, and then minus 1 half to the power, capital N, plus 1. And that's exactly uh, what we uh, needed to prove. So uh, the uh, capital Sn plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 half to the power capital N plus 1. So now we see that our guess is indeed correct. So now we know our nth partial sum, so we can try to compute the sum of the series. How do we do that? We have to take the limit n to infinity of capital Sn and see whether the limit, this limit exists. So limit n to infinity over 1 minus 1 half to the power capital N. Well, the second one is a standard limit, the limit equals 0, so our sum equals 1. So 1 half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, etc., etc., if you add those up, that equals 1. It's also a nice geometric way to see that. We take our 1 by 1 square, and how can we visualize the sum? Well, the sum equals 1 half uh, plus 1 quarter. So the second partial sum is this part of the square. And then, if we, we want to add 1 over 8, we have to half this over here, and we have to add this part of our square. Then we have 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 over 8, and then we have to add 1 over 16. Well, this, the total side of the remaining part equals uh, one, over, uh, 1 over 8. So if we want to add 1 over 16, we have to take half of this. So we add 1 over 16. And we want to add 1 over 32, so we have to add again 1 half of what is remaining. 
and so on and so on. And you see if you continue this procedure, in the end, if you go up to infinity, you've filled the whole square uh, and the area of the whole square equals one. So that's a geometric way so to see that this uh, sum of one half plus one quarter, etc., is indeed equal to one.